beta hydroxybutyrate one of the one of the ways that main ketone not that we've talked about ketones but some of my work is on ketones i've been one i've wondered in the past the ketone is unique because on one hand it's a nutrient it's a calorie to be burned but at the other hand it's a signaling molecule and it is known to elicit some of its signaling like anti-inflammatory effects and antioxidant effects part of it is through changes elicited because of a g-protein coupled receptor where it does have a cell surface receptor that it will activate I don't know the degree to which acetic acid may do the same thing, but with regards to beta-hydroxybutyrate, even exogenous ketones, um, that wasn't one you mentioned, but there are increasingly increasing studies showing that you can have, there was just a, a study in women with PCOS, the only intervention was to give them exogenous ketones, and every outcome related to metabolic markers and PCOS got better. And the only change was the supplementation with exogenous ketones. I don't know that that was an effect of the bioenergetics of the ketone. It was probably more of the signaling effect. And so that would be another thing if a person's becoming increasingly curious about ketones. And that's not without justification. The evidence supporting the, the value of ketones is growing uh, and, and growing quickly. And it ought to. I have never in the past wanted to be seen as a drum beating advocate of a ketogenic diet, simply knowing that that's not everyone's cup of tea. But increasingly, I will vigorously defend ketones as very beneficial, viable signaling molecules in the body. So even when it comes to uh, controlling the metabolic response, you're probably going to eat less because ketones have a very satiating effect, um, more so than, say, glucose does. Um, but then they also will impact uh, mitochondrial uncoupling and help the body burn through that glucose faster. No, it's 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 interesting. Ketone ketones are definitely signaling molecules, and I also think there's a lot of overlap between lactate and beta hydroxybutyrate yes. as well. I mean, they're activating a lot of the same like brain drive neurotrophic factor. Yeah, one, agreed. That, you know, um, and well, this so is where exogenous ketones I think become so helpful. Where if you have someone who just says, "I just don't want to do the ketogenic diet." but I still would like some of the benefits. Um, there are so many good options nowadays that I think, I think it becomes a viable approach for someone to say, I want the ketones, but I, want, I don't want ketogenic, so I'm just going to drink them. Earlier in our discussion, I mentioned on one of my many tangents, Dr. George Cahill's work. And he was really one of the more, f more famous, prominent, what they called at the time starvation scientists. We would call fasting scientists. But that same study I mentioned where he, they, it made you wonder, why was it that these patients who got down to 20 milligrams per deciliter of glucose, many people will say that's lethal, like it'll kill you. And yet they not only didn't die, they had no cognitive deficit whatsoever. The speculation, I don't know whether it was him or maybe Richard Veach in a sort of follow-up commentary, a ketone scientist who's also passed away now, where it, uh, if, if the brain has adapted to ketones, it may be more resilient to tolerate a low glucose, mm. but most people, one, haven't adapted to ketones and two, don't even have any ketones. That's the problem is because the same intervention for the most part that's going to drop the glucose in someone, like someone who eats a really sugary meal uh, or drinks it, their glucose is going to come up and the higher it goes, usually the lower it's going to go at the end where you have a rebound hypoglycemia you would say, well, I should be able to weather that drop because I have ketones. No, because the same thing that's uh, that's helping you reserve, reverse your glucose, the high insulin, is going to inhibit ketogenesis. And so you've deprived your brain in that acute moment of its primary fuels, uh, glucose and ketones, although the brain does use lactate mm -hmm. um, as a fuel as well, albeit to lower levels. But if glucose and ketones have started to go low, that's going to be a panic at the brain because that is its two primary fuels. And as I mentioned earlier, the brain doesn't have a reservoir of stored energy, a very, very modest amount, but its metabolic rate is so high that it, it needs constant supply.